In this section, we'll see the relationship between complex numbers in rectangular form versus polar form. In the previous unit, we looked at complex numbers in polar form as a drawing, as a vector on the rectangular coordinate system. What we're going to do now is because that's a vector, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and the x and y values to find the length of that vector, the hypotenuse, and we're going to find the angle with which it's at. And it all stems from this, these thoughts that I'm going to share with you now. So first of all, when we studied right triangles and the rectangular coordinate system, we started with those right triangles in the first quadrant. Let's see if I can get this to be straight. Perfect. Um, and so we had this angle theta here, and this was called side x, and this is called side y, and this is called side r. And we developed the definition for the cosine of an angle. The cosine of an angle was its side adjacent over the hypotenuse, or x over r. And what we're going to do now with that thought is we're going to multiply both sides of this algebraic statement by r in order to cancel those letters out. And when we do, we get this statement right here. We get r times the cosine of theta is represented by the letter x, or x is r times the cosine of theta. Likewise, the sine of theta is defined as the side opposite the angle over the hypotenuse, or from this picture, y over r. When we take this statement and we multiply both sides by the letter r to clear this denominator out, we have r times the sine of theta is equal to y, or what I've written right here. So these um, two thoughts, x is equal to r times the cosine of theta and y is equal to r times the sine of theta, are going to come back to play when we develop what's called the polar form of a complex number. But please remember, in the meantime, we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem and that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And also, please remember that if we know x and y, if we know x and y, look at this picture over here, then we would use tangent to find the size of this angle, knowing x and y, because the tangent of an angle is defined as a side opposite over the side adjacent, or y divided by x. So if complex numbers have been in what we've called a plus b times j, or x plus y times j form, so remember, say you had, um, I'm going to go ahead and stick with that, Say you had um, a complex number here that this ordered pair was, um, I guess I'm going to make it 2 comma 2. It would be thought of as 2 plus 2 times j, where, you know, here's our real, here's our imaginary part, and that's the ordered pair through the terminal side. What we're going to do right now is we're going to replace the letter x with way back up here, r times the cosine of theta. So we're going to replace that with r times the cosine of theta. You see this letter y right here? We're going to replace that with r times the sine of theta. And so we're going to say that a complex number in polar form, instead of being x plus y times j, will be r times the cosine of theta plus r times the sine of theta with a j at the end. See this j right here? Both of these terms have the letter r in them. So I'm going to factor out the letter r, and when I do that, I'll need to have in the parentheses the cosine of theta because when I multiply this, I have to be able to get back here. And then here, I'm going to put sine theta j, but we tend to put j in front and close this. So this is the form that we're going to use, the polar form of a complex number. We're going to have that r value, which represents the hypotenuse of a right triangle in the angle theta, which is going to be found using tangent. Let's go to our first problem. So if we have a complex number that's in the first quadrant, that I would go to the right 6 and up 8 right here, and I would draw its hypotenuse. I don't know why this wants to misbehave. Um, I think what I'll do is try to watch that spot. I 
think this is 8, and hopefully I'm right. Let's see if I can draw a straight line. I won't go to this much detail anymore. Oh, well. Um, so this is the right triangle that I'm dealing with, with sides 6 and 8. So by the Pythagorean theorem, you would find that this is 10, because this is a 3, 4, 5, or multiples of a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So my R value in this problem would be the number 10. My angle theta would be found right here, and I would find that by taking the inverse tangent of 8 divided by 6. And when you do that, you get an angle of 53.1 degrees. So I would now be able to write this complex number that is represented by this blue line right here, and it has an arrowhead on it. That complex number in polar form would be equal to 10 times the cosine of 53.1 not sure why I wrote 31, but 53.1 degrees plus J times the sine of 53.1 degrees. I'm all done. I've taken this from rectangular form, 6 plus 8J, to polar form. So if I want to do this next one with the same kind of values, but this time I'm going to go to the left 6 and up 8, I think, to right there. Um, I'm looking at this vector quantity, but its reference right triangle has a leg that's a negative 6 and a leg that's a positive 8. So it doesn't matter. Um, 6 and 8 still give us a hypotenuse of 10. And, you know, that 6 and 8 still give us a reference angle of 53.1 degrees. Um, so this angle right here is 53.1 degrees when I take the inverse tangent of 8 over 6. So my y value divided by my x value. But again, my y value, the 8, divided by the 6. I just don't use the signs. So I can get the reference angle of 53 degrees. I know I'm in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, I take 180 and subtract that 53.1 degrees, and I'd get 126.9 degrees. So my complex number in polar form is 10 times the cosine of 126.9 plus j times the sine of 126.9. For a moment here, I just want to pause and say to you that some people write this expression in shorthand form. And the shorthand form for this is to write the R value and just state what the angle of the vector is. Remember, this is a vector. That's how we wrote vectors way back in Chapter 9 when we were studying the physics-related topics of vectors. So the magnitude of the um, hypotenuse and the angle is another way to express this. Let's go now into the fourth quadrant. So let's go to the right 6 and down 8. I believe that's where that is. And we're looking at this vector right now. So that vector still has a hypotenuse of 10. It still has a reference angle of 53.1 degrees. But now, because it's in the fourth quadrant, I'm going to take 360 and subtract that 53. So in the fourth quadrant, I'll take 360 minus the 53.1 degrees, and I'm going to get an angle of 306.9 degrees. The shorthand to write this vector in polar form is to state its R value of 10 and its angle of 306.9 degrees. Again, don't remember, don't forget though, that that means 10 times the cosine of 306.9 degrees plus J times the sine of 306.9 degrees. Let's do a couple more before we finish up. So here I'm just going to do a sketch. This vector is in the third quadrant. So I'm going to go to the left 43 and down 56. So about right here. So again, its legs are a negative 43 and a negative 56. Would you put that into the Pythagorean theorem? If you don't have the program, then just put in a positive 43 squared and a positive 56 squared so you don't get messed up with those negative signs because when you square them, they will become positive, and your R value will be 70.6. Next, I need you to find your reference angle. So your reference angle is found using tangent because tangent is your Y value divided by your X value. Your Y value is 56. Your X value is 43. 
please don't bother with the signs so you get an acute something less than 90 degrees reference angle um, it looks to me like that's 52.5 degrees because in the third quadrant then you will take 180 degrees and add your reference angle to find the size of the angle in that quadrant so 180 degrees plus your reference angle which should be 232.5 degrees the shorthand answer for this problem in polar form is 70.6 at an angle of 232.5 degrees the last problem I'd like to do x is positive y is negative so I'm going to go to the right here about 1.7 and I'm going to go down about 1. I'm just wanting you to see that the square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. So this is the square root of 3 and this side right here is a negative 1. When you put those into the Pythagorean theorem, if you put exactly the square root of 3 in there and then exactly 1 in there, the square root of 3 squared is 3 and 1 squared is 1 and the square root of 4 will give you 2. If you didn't use the square root of 3, if you used its abbreviation of 1.7 whatever it is, you won't get 2 exactly for this. Your reference angle here would be found by taking the inverse tangent of 1 over the square root of 3. That answer should be 30 degrees and then in the fourth quadrant we always take 360 and subtract our reference angle so the actual angle for this vector is 330 degrees our results then would be 2 at an angle of 330 degrees remember in longhand that's 2 times the cosine of 330 plus j times the sine of 330 degrees. What we've done just now is we've looked at complex numbers in rectangular form. So rectangular form. We've thought about them as a picture and as a vector in the rectangular coordinate system. And then we've used the Pythagorean theorem and tangent to help us convert this vector so that it has both magnitude and direction, much like we did with vectors in chapter 9.